into a, a segment, a game that we call start, sub, or sit. And so uh, just briefly, we'll give you three different topics, basketball topics. We'll ask you to start one, sub one, and sit one. And then we can have a little uh, fun discussion around it. And so, uh, and coach, we are keeping our eye on the clock, just FYI too. Oh, for it's, you. it's so, all good. I can tell you, I'm a little nervous about this start. <laughs> I, I, I listen to the podcast you sent me and I hear coaches stumbling and, you know, want <laughs> qualifying answers. And I'm just like, I, I'm going to try to be decisive, but it might be tricky. Okay. Well, we like it, to hear. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll, we'll, we'll start with, uh, start with an easy one for you. Just, uh, more of a philosophical one. Uh, we'll get to the defensive side on the ball of the ball on this. So these are uh, start subset energy plays that you can make on the defensive side of the ball. So start subset a steal, uh, taking a, or a charge or a block shot. Uh, I laughed when you said steal because we're generally bottom 10 in the country in steals. We don't force <laughs> okay. a lot of turnovers. So probably going to sit that one um okay uh, you know what i'm actually i'm going to sit the charge because i think it's kind of moving out of our game i don't i think it's kind of getting harder to get the call and harder to take on good athletes so i'm going to i'm going to sit the charge i'm going to sub the steal and i'm going to take the block we, we've been really good at blocks uh, over the years like nationally like you know number one number two in the country and um besides stopping the other team and keeping their field options low it does as you know, it can initiate the break um, and get you get you going, uh, get you some offense. Coach, a follow up on that. Um, some interesting things you said there, but the first one is with the block. Do you practice or do you teach guys how to block shots? Oh God, no! I, I, I <laughs> we, we just got really fortunate. I mean, we had three guys over the last six years that were just elite, and and they were good blockers, but even better, they were alterers. I mean, they just altered everything. And we took people would call us and say, Oh, you're, you're good around field goal percentage D around the rim. And I don't even know where they got that stat. Um, but, and I like, you know, what, what are you techniques you teaching? And I, we're not teaching anything. We got these three dudes and they're just cleaning up everything. So um, I do think you can, if a guy's not doing it aggressively enough, I think you can get him in practice and kind of like set him up for some stuff to get it in his, get it top of mind. Uh, but generally we just had three guys that were really, really good at it. Coach, if I could maybe just maybe be more specific with my question. Um, do you prefer the block shot to come from off the ball or do you want guys that are guarding the ball to try to block a shot or would you prefer them to say straight up? What's the uh, preference there? Definitely off the ball. Uh, guys, I think when you start teaching guys on the ball to block the shot, I think they're they're leaving their feet, you know, sure. like popcorn, uh, you know, every time you get a chance. So we we tend to discourage that. Um, so definitely uh, off the ball help would be my preference. Okay. Pat, sorry, I got one more for yeah, him. Keep going. No, yeah. <laughs> well, I, two things. You mentioned being low in steals. Um, and I'm wondering if that is because of your overall defensive philosophy, you don't think it's worth it or you just didn't, on the flip side, you had guys that could block shots. And on the other side, you just didn't have guys that were active in lanes. Or is that something you just feel is not, worth it to work on no I, I wish we were first in the country in seals I, I i think it's more about philosophy okay um in that with our personnel we have found over time we are it's better for us to be solid than it is to be you know maybe go for home runs like you know go for steals be solid with our scouting report defense um over the years, I mean, I've learned this time and time again. It, it's just we're, at Swarthmore, that's best for us um, for whatever reason. Um, and, uh, you know, again, sometimes our assistant coach comes to me. He's like, I think we could, you know, trap. And I was like, I, I hear you. I thought that at one point, and but this is what works for us. Although saying that, I do think we can be better at it. We can find some opportunities to create some turnovers for sure. Sure. Okay. All right, coach. My start sub sit in terms of being a great team defense or having a great team defense, the type of players you would want out there physical, well, physicality, length, or quickness. I guess the traits you would look for to be that's, a good team defense. That's a tough one. Um, when it comes to physicality, you, 
I should, I maybe should have mentioned this earlier. You're talking to the guy who, when I graduated from Davidson, I had more career fouls than anyone in <laughs> the story and history of Davidson basketball. So I tend to recruit a bunch of hackers because um, we all have our biases. Um, so the physicality, when you said it, I was going to be like, oh, I'm starting that one. But then you talked length and quickness and I'm, I'm probably going to start quickness um, mainly because it's, it's an area we, we need to get better at. Um, in terms of keeping people in front of us and and not giving up dribble penetration. Uh, you know, length is a close second because we all know how important that is to take away passing angles and, uh, you know, altering shots at the rim. And I guess physicality third, I would, I would sit physicality, but that is, that's really tough to say. I mean, it's almost blasphemous to utter those <laughs> words, but that's what I, that's what I got to go with. Uh, <laughs> well, the follow up, because yeah, we, you know, in doing our research and talking to coach, we know you have a very physical team. So how do you teach physicality, but not fouling or not being a team? Yeah. Like we can't be physical because we just foul all the time. Well, we going back to recruiting, you know, that toughness component, the physical piece, especially for big guys is uh, it's mandatory. Um, you know, and you guys, you guys know this. I mean, you know, sometimes you're, you're your assistants will come and go, this guy can stretch the court. He's six, six and you know, he can shoot and he's just talented. And I'm like, he won't hit a soul out there to box out. Like there's no way we're taking him, you know? So um, I, I think that comes through recruiting. And then we do, I mean, we just kind of have physical practices. And it's something I learned from coach McKillop just about how to be physical. We have learned over the years, how to be smart, physical, uh, how to be smarter about it. Um, you know, you can do stuff with like towels or, or you know, holding the towels around your, your neck just, yeah. just so they don't play with their hands. We really have our coaches watch our bigs when we practice post D because a lot of guys get tired or lazy and they grab the hip. Um, so we just really watch it. But at the same time, I'd rather err on the side of being more aggressive. Um, and we generally do foul more than most. Um, and, and it hurts us at times. Um, but as we all know, too, I, I think a lot of times at some point the referees stop calling it. So it's kind of, it, we don't play with that strategy, but I think being overly physical is to your advantage. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Sorry. So Pat, it's me, right? Yeah. It's you. All right. Coach, this is um start sub sit. If you could be the best team in your conference at one of these three statistical categories. So start sub sit being the best offensive rebounding team in your conference being the team with the best assist to turnover ratio in your conference or being the best three point field goal shooting percentage team in your conference. And maybe you've been all three of these <laughs> I'm sure before, but if you had to yeah, choose. Those are three that were pretty good, except the, well, the one which I'll sit, um, which would be assist to turnover. Like my first few years, we turned it over. We had to be top five in the country. Uh, and we finally figured out how to coach it a little better in practice, which has helped us, but I'll sit assist to turnover uh, I'm going to start O rebound. Um, again, you're talking to a guy who was a, a, a four man in college and I couldn't score if I didn't have a free lane. And so that's how I made a living. And our teams have been really good at that uh, O rebounding. And then uh, three point field, field goal percentage, I, I would um, I would sub. Mm -hmm. Although, I mean, we're generally pretty good and I like that. And we recruit shooters. I, I, I like the O rebound. Uh, I'd like to win that crown a little bit more than the others. <laughs> Can I follow yeah, up? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Pat. Yeah. Good. You mentioned that you've gotten better at coaching the kind of the, the assists or turnovers in practice. And I know we mentioned earlier that, you know, you learn if you're cutting the bigs, that solves a lot of it. But what other ways are you coaching in practice these, you know, the turnovers and the assists? Two main things we've done that have helped. And first, again, you know, the first three or four years, your head is spinning. You're trying to just get better. And all of a sudden you get in the game, you turn it over 17, 18 times. And you're like, what are we doing wrong? Well, we never talked about it in practice, you know. Um, and, and then when it got bad, we would just yell. Uh, and that I don't think that's really teaching. So what we've done now, we got something um, I think we got from the Xavier men's team a few years back that they use these turnover cards. So it's a visual for the guys and, and we have our manager tape them on the, the scorers table. So when we get one, they flip it over one, the team has one for the practice. And we usually say, you know, if we get, when we get to eight, we're going to stop practice and we got a consequence. Um, okay. So they're just kind of looking over there. It just, it keeps it top of mind. Um, and then the other thing we do, uh, which we added maybe two years ago, which I think is the, the best way to limit turnovers again, just to keep it 
uh, as an area of focus is um, as soon as there's a turnover in practice, someone just like yells it out. Like usually the players like turnover and uh, and someone just like takes off and runs like a down and back. But it's not the person who created the, who, who made the turnover. So the person okay. who made the turnover now feels a little guilt uh, and just kind of a, a nice reminder, a gentle reminder to, uh, you know, take better care of the ball and value it um, because his teammate had a consequence. So it's not really a punishment. It's more of a, at least that's a, how I justify it. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a reminder and that yeah. they're kind of responsible to their teammates to not turn it over. No, I like, I like that. That's really clever. Yeah, yeah I do too. Coach, I, I got to ask about offensive rebounding. I know you personally were a great offensive rebounder and your teams have been. Um, how, how do you how do you teach that? Do you work on that? Or, or how many guys do you send? You know, what, what are the ins and outs of offensive rebounding for you? Well, I, I just got to say that all the Davidson guys are going to crush me if, if I, they think I'm bragging about being an offensive rebounder. So I'm just going to say I was decent. I was not great. You said great. I said decent. Those are my um, words. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, again, we kind of recruit, we want guys that, that are, have the toughness to crash the glass. Uh, but then we, we, we work at it. Like we call it like the gauntlet, you know, we just like, they have to like sprint from the, this is just a big drill, like a one man, big drill. They're in a line. They sprint from the baseline up to the volleyball line. And as they're coming back, one coach is shooting, and two coach or two coaches are like banging them with blocking dummies um, and they have to just fight through. So th they're, they're having to run, which is hard. And they're having to come from the perimeter and then they're having to get by someone um, who's trying to block them out. So that's what we teach our bigs uh, philosophy wise. I'm open to different ideas. We, we've always done like three, three, four and five to the glass. Mm -hmm. I've heard some coaches talk recently about maybe just designating certain guys as uh, crashers even if that means you've sometimes got two and you sometimes got four. Um, I, our, our system has worked pretty well, but I, I'm, I'm definitely intrigued by the um, personalization of, yeah. of crashing the glass. I, th I think there's something to that. Coach, if I can ask one quick follow-up too on this is um, offensive rebounding and also being a five out team. Sometimes I feel like it can feel very opposite where you got five guys on the perimeter kind of floating around. How much demanding does it take from you to get those guys to go when you have more guys potentially on the perimeter? Well, you know, this is, as you were asking, it makes me think about, you know, people ask me a lot, like what, what did the greatest thing you learned from coach McKillop? And uh, what most people don't know if you haven't worked with them is like coach McKillop never settles for anything. You know, some teams will be like, well, they're good in transition. So maybe we don't crash when we get back. He's like, we're going to crash and we're going to get back and we're going to figure it out. Um, and, you know, so that point of like, we're five out, some coaches would go, well, maybe we shouldn't get on them about crashing. It's hard. And um, we're just like three, four and five. You go every damn time. And there's no excuses. You just do it. And when, so they don't have an out, you know, it's just like, this is what we do. We know it's challenging, but we're going to do it. Um so it, it is, it's sometimes though, you see the guys are tired, like they've been working in motion and now they've got to crash on some quick shot. And, but um, if, if, they're, if they're getting tired, we'll sub some guys in, that'll do it. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Coach with that, with that gauntlet drill, just hearing you talk about it, I was thinking, do you put in their minds, like, are you emphasizing like having them track the ball or trying to anticipate where it's coming off? I mean, I know the drill is naturally probably instilling that in them, but are you, like making a point of like, Hey, follow the ball or, you know, kind of see the trajectory of it at all. You know, I think the, the following the ball and seeing where it's going to come, I think that's, I don't like to use the word innate, but like a Dennis Rodman, like he was a master, you know, like I, maybe, yeah. I, and I know I've heard he practiced it and we, we probably should teach it more. The, the one thing we teach is just kind of what everyone teaches is just to kind of go opposite, just play the percentages. Yeah. So when our coach is shooting it, he's usually just shooting it from like inside the left wing and they're going through the gauntlet at like the right elbow and they know they don't need to run to the left side. That's you, you, you know, you're in the 10, yeah. 15 percentile of getting chance of getting it. Yeah. Um, and likewise teaching guys. And my dad taught me this growing up, he played in the NBA and he would watch me, you know, and say like, you're going to the baseline route and you're going there because no one's there, but you're not going to get it. You're under the backboard. It doesn't help. Um, so we do teach our guys, like if you're coming from the wing, like really get middle, um, still staying on that side to play the percentages, but don't go underneath the basket. You know, that's just, that's yeah. what a lot of people do. Cause it's easy. 
um, and it becomes habit and you got to break that habit. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Pat, one more, bring us home. And yeah. then, all right. All right, coach, my last one for you, um, and I'll fence it. You got to run a set. So kind of the, the entry formation, start, sub or sit horns entry, Iverson entry or zipper entry. You're going to have to tell me what the Iverson entry is. Tell me uh, that first. Then I'll... The Iverson is where you're kind of running a wing um, across the two guards. Let's say the two bigs that are at the elbow or maybe one big at the free throw line. And you're running him from, let's say, the left wing across that screen to the right wing and then entering it to him. Okay. And then that's what I thought a zipper was. So now tell me what the zipper is. <laughs> a, a zipper is, is, I mean, I could be wrong too. The, uh, the guard will dribble to a side and then the big will down screen the guard at the block for him oh, yeah. to come up. And then usually they're doing a step up. Okay. Or, and, and I should have explained this earlier. Like I I'm so bad with like universal language because th this Davidson family, like we have these, like this crazy vernacular, um, so like what you said about Iverson, that's what we call a zipper, like a, like a guard coming off at a flat angle to get it on the wing. Yeah. Um, I, I would, I would definitely start the horns. I think there's a ton of po possibilities out of the horns. Uh, that's where we run a lot of our sets out of. And I just think what it does is you're putting like probably usually like your three most talented offensive guys in, in these spots that are well spaced and they have a ton of options. So I'm going to start the horns. Um, I'm probably going to sit, um, your version of the zipper. Um, <laughs> there's a team in our league that does it and, and it is harder to guard and they do some stuff out of it that can mess with you. Uh, but I also think like when you're entering up top, that's you're open up the possibility of a run out. Yeah. So I, I prefer wing entries when possible. So, you know, that's a little bit, you know, you're not giving up two. So then I would guess I would sub the, uh, the Iverson entry, which, you know, we've never done, but is I've always liked and thought about, and I saw someone doing it in the NCAA tournament that did it really well. And I kind of wrote it down as something to put in for a few of our guys. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm always curious how coaches, and I mean, you hit on it with the horns, just how you think about when you're going to run a set, what the formation, how you want to get into it. Is it, are you reverse engineering it as far as like, you want to get a post up or you want to end with a top ball screen or are you, like you said, no horns, cause we can just get so much out of, or, you know, it leads, it can lead to so many things, I guess. How do you kind of, what comes first? Yeah, this has kind of evolved over the years, going back to Davidson and now at Swarthmore, like for, again, for whatever reason, like with our personnel, it, that's why I don't watch European basketball. I love European basketball. I don't watch because a lot of their plays are like all this false action and then the play, then, then the real action. Yeah. I, we're running motion and we're sprinting the court. We're already tired. Like I, and teams generally um, deny us a lot. So like false actions, just like, you know, the first, second pass is in there and everything's blown up. So our thing is more like, let's make a pass. Let's get it to like one of our dudes who's in space um, and let's just let him go to work. So we really simplify. Most of our actions are some version of an isolation, but that's just because of, of, of the, the system we already have and the guys are already a little fatigued from it. And it's because of how teams defend us. Um, and quite frankly, I am just not really elaborate with plays. I am just like a little lazy. Like we have this good guy, let's put him at the elbow. Let's get these guys the hell out of the way and let's yeah. play some basketball, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of value in keeping it simple. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, coach, you're, uh, you're off the start sub sit hot seat. Oh, thank God. All right. Great. <laughs> those, those